Hey, Morningstar, last week at our Wednesday staff devotional, we were talking about righteousness, and, and righteousness means right living. And in the Bible, righteousness is a good thing. I mean, a really good thing. God wants us to, to live rightly, and that to him means that we will obey his commandments. Commandments which, remember, he designed in order to bless us. The problem with righteousness is when we preface it with the word self. And that's a problem because we begin to, in self-righteousness, worship ourselves and the practices which are designed to make us righteous instead of the one who is righteous, namely Jesus. Let me illustrate here on my whiteboard. The goal of the Christian life is to be more Christ-like. But usually what we do is this. In order to be more Christ-like, we start filling in all these steps with our works. We refer to these works as spiritual disciplines, things like reading our Bible and praying and giving our tithes and offerings, attending worship, inviting others to worship, and, and serving others, whether that's inside the church or serving others outside the church. And again, nothing wrong with any of these. The truth is, most of us need to be a whole lot more conscientious about and committed to these works, these practices and disciplines. But here's the deal. When we make these our goal, how proficient we are at checking these off every day and week and month, our relationship with God becomes about what we're doing to earn his favor instead of being based on receiving what he's done for us in Jesus Christ. So let me propose a different tack. Keeping the same staircase with the same steps, the same practices, let's just change the direction from up to down. And when we do this, you see, what we're doing is we're changing our motives. Our motives are being changed from earning our righteousness to receiving our righteousness. So each day when we wake up, we, we have this idea that the primary goal of the spiritual life is for me to die to my own plans, my own preferences, my own agendas, to die to those and allow the Holy Spirit to really lead me. Seriously, friends, that's the goal of the Christian life, to surrender to the lordship of the Holy Spirit. And what you're going to find is this. First, you're going to be doing a lot of these same practices and disciplines, but instead of feeling all puffed up as you get them checked off or guilty when you don't check them off, you'll be doing them from a sense of freedom and love, not duty. And second, you'll start seeing other people differently. Instead of being in some sort of competition with them, right? Looking down on those who don't seem to be doing any of the things or, or a lot fewer of them than you do or begrudging those who seem holier than thou and much better at doing them than you are, you'll begin to see them as Jesus does. And you'll realize that all you have to do is just love other people, no matter who they are, no matter what they're doing or failing to do. Hey, you remember the Apostle Paul, right? That Jewish Pharisee who claimed to keep the law better than anyone else, he was a self-righteous dude. But look what he writes when he becomes a follower of Jesus. Philippians 3, verses 7 to 11, Paul writes, Yet whatever gains I had, I have come to regard these as loss because of Christ. More than that, he says, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I've suffered the loss of all things. I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. You see, there it is. Paul talks about it. Surrender and submit. Descend into greatness. Die to self and be clothed daily with the righteousness that comes not from our works, but from Jesus Christ who lives and works within us, the hope of our glory. Hey, friends, I hope this gives you a little insight to chew on this week as you take that next step on your spiritual journey. And with Jesus leading you and me, there's no doubt we'll be the church this week, whatever we're doing. And I can't wait to be in worship with you this weekend as we kick off this brand new series entitled Insomnia, which is about those things that tend to keep us up at night. Hey, Morningstar, God bless you. I'll see you this weekend.